Hi, and welcome back to Three and Out with Chris Spielman. I'm Mike O'Hare, and brought to you again by Comerica, the fine people of Comerica. And Chris Spielman, another loss for the Detroit Lions. At home, Sunday, 38-17 to the Tampa Bay Bucks. The losing streak continues. And before we get to the go three and out with the plays, you know, Matt Patricia, the head coach, had a session with his team on the sideline after they got down 14 to nothing and really kind of let them have it. You were a player before that. You've probably had those sort of situations. How do you react to that as a player? Well, I mean, as a professional, you respond to what your coach wants and you look at it and if it's valid points. And I think Matt certainly had valid observations and frustration and saying, look, guys, you're better than this. Let's go out and show it. And I think it's a it's a good sign for Lions fans that this team hasn't quit and it hasn't quit on its head coach because they did play better after the uh, addressing that Matt Patricia gave them. All right, let's go to the plays. We're going to start here in the first quarter. And as you know, Jameis Winston, the quarterback, throws touchdown passes by bunches and same thing with interceptions. Their first possession, an interception by Jelani Tavai, the rookie linebacker. Go three and out, break it down. Tell us what you see. Well, I think Jelani's a really good player. And the best thing about this is Jelani's going to show blitz. Watch him step up into that B gap right there between the guard and tackle. Now, the thing I love about this is that he is patient and he doesn't get to his coverage before the ball snapped. So he really sold that blitz thinking that letting Jameis Winston think that he was coming. And then Jelani does what he's coached to do. He's going to look and go to the to his right and play the hot route or the blitz control route. He jumps right in front of it, does a good job of getting square, reading the quarterback's eyes and showing great hands because that's not an easy catch for a linebacker to make. It was just an outstanding effort, and it's good to see one of the young draft picks in Jelani Tavai make a play for his team. Outstanding effort. He's getting better and better. I think he's going to be a good player before it's all said and done. Well, Chris Spielman, that gives the Lions first and 10 in, in uh, Tampa Bay's territory, but they can't make anything of it. And the Bucks strike quickly twice for two touchdowns, make it 14 to nothing. Our second play we're going to show you here is another touchdown catch by Brashad Perriman. If that name sounds familiar, it should. His father, Brett Perriman, was a terrific receiver for the Detroit Lions back in the 1990s. Break it down. Tell us what you see on this third and 15, 25-yard catch. Well, Amani Aruwariye, number 24, is going to get caught here a little bit. You see right there, he's getting picked a little bit, but it's his job not to get picked. And the one way you can do that, and the best way he can do that, is you're playing man coverage with two guys deep, is you can get up and play press coverage. And this is a game plan thing. Don't wait for those receivers to rub off of you, because then you'll get caught behind, you'll get caught chasing. And guys in this league run too fast to put yourself in this position. The other thing that uh, there's not a good pass rush here because Jamin Winston has a clear pocket to step up into. And one thing we know about Jameis is that he'll keep his eyes downfield. He sees Perriman clear and it's off to the races. And watch there at the end, you'll see our, uh, Amani's frustration. But if you go back to the beginning from the sideline view, guys, if you don't mind, I mean, we see this week in and week out in the NFL. Any type of the stack position and you're outside and you're free like this, I think the one thing you can do to help yourself is get up there and play press coverage. Don't give him that clean release, which allows him to set up the pick, which allows a free run across the field. And he doesn't have any help because everybody's taken away and he's just chasing. And it's set up by good protection, good vision by Jameis, and uh, Perriman taking it and winning his one-on-one -on -one battle. Well, not counting that touchdown pass that made it 21 to nothing. The Lions actually were playing better on defense. We're going to move along now to the third quarter. And here's a big play by Dan Danny Amendola, who showed some fire yesterday, a 46-yard catch that leads to a touchdown that makes it 24 to 10. Break it down, go three and out. Tell us what you see on this play. Well, Daryl Bevel does a good job of play design. And this is called, you're just going to move the pocket. Now, you're going to watch how all the linemen are going to work to the right on the rollout pass. And Amendola's got a good clean release, and that's a wheel route. And he does a good job of running away and creating separation. Now, the defensive back will actually hold him, but uh, Danny shows good strength and focus and concentration and catches the ball, even though it would have been pass interference or slash holding. Good thing he caught the ball, because if they would have called holding, it would only have been a five-yard penalty. But go back to that. I want to show you something. Look how that offensive line does a good job and a good play design. They're just going to set the pocket up to the right, 
and they do a good job of protection, allow a clean throwing lane, and plenty of time for David Blau to step into that throw and makes a perfect throw. So well done, good play design, well executed by the Lions. And you'll see it from the end zone. And just show the offensive line guys how they move this pocket. It's, uh, it's a nice little change up, and it's a chance to attack one side of the field and give your quarterback plenty of time to throw the football. See how everybody's moving over there? Got a nice clean pocket. Plenty of time to step into the throw so you can get everything into the throw. Then Amendola with the finish. Well done. Well, rookie Wes Hill is a rookie running back in his first pro game. Gets, finishes that off with a one-yard run for a touchdown. And he gets another one later. It's 24-17, Chris. And as we move to the fourth quarter, after a missed field goal, the Lions have the ball near midfield, down by a touchdown and a chance to do something. But all of that ends on this interception by Sean Murphy Bunting and a 70-yard return for a touchdown that just break the game open. Break it down, go three and out. Tell us what you see on this play. Well, Murphy Bunning, I've done a couple Bucks game this year. He's a guy that's improving now. Uh, right away, he's going to get a pre-snap read. Now, Tampa's going to be in a nice little zone right here, and Bunting's going to get a good read on Blau. And the problem with Blau has, and we can see this from the end zone, first of all, it's a good read and good zone coverage. That's the old Tampa 2 where they're playing quarters coverage. And it's just off to the races. But from the end zone, watch David Blau's head. Look where his eyes go. Now, his eyes are going right to the target. He's staring at the target. They're in zone. So if you're playing zone as a defender and a man comes into your area, you break on where that man's going. So you take your zone and convert it to the man. And it's an easy break because of the stare down by Blau. I mean, he never takes his eye off the target. So basically, uh, John is running the route for Amendola, and he just runs a, a better route. And plus, the ball is late and behind, and he's got no shot. So you make that mistake in the NFL, uh, it's going to cost you big, and it did here. Well, the fans in the, in the forward field there, as soon as he caught the ball and saw that he had a lane to the end zone, the place just went dead quiet. That made it 31-17. They finish it off with another touchdown, get the final score a 38-17. Chris Spielman next week, the Lions go to the Denver Broncos to play another team with a young quarterback, a rookie quarterback in Drew Locke. Losing streak like this, going on the road. You've been in these situations before as a player. What do you look for next week? Well, I look for him to respond and keep playing hard. I mean, you look at this team, Mike, they're playing with guys that in the preseason that I never heard of. I never heard of them until a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's just they're doing what they can. And I, I think it's – and I know fans don't want to hear this, and there are no excuses, but, you know, you're playing with a free agent quarterback where I don't know what running back we're on. It might be the fourth or fifth running back. Who, who knows? I have no idea what we're on. Kenny Wiggins got hurt yesterday. And so they're doing the best they can. It's just that, you know, you're doing it with guys that are backups uh, at best right now in the national right now at this point in their career. And unfortunately, you know, you can compete and get close in games, but you're not going to win many games when you're playing a ton of backups. Well, Chris, that's a wrap for this week. Next Sunday, Detroit Lions at Denver Broncos kickoff 4.05 p.m. Detroit time. Thanks.